How's it going guys? I'm Theo Theo Jojo and today I've got 10 free really cool apps that are available on both Android and iOS so no matter what phone you use you should be able to enjoy these and a lot of these are really useful especially when we have to be staying home more in the recent months. Before we jump in obviously I want to give a quick shameless plug to my Instagram account which has won a Nobel Prize for being the most amazing hilarious Instagram account on planet Earth with the best tech memes you could possibly imagine. So if you want to check that out it's just at Theo Jo over on Instagram, be sure to follow me on that. So starting off with number one, this is an app that I've used and loved for a long time, and it is called TV Time. And it's basically an app where you can discover and keep track of any TV shows you've been watching or want to watch in the future. So for example, you can see this is a list of my stats for all the TV shows I'm either watching at the moment and haven't finished, or ones I have finished completely in the past, and also shows that you know I've, I'm caught up on but have not finished as a series yet, so they're in there too. And then what you do is as you watch each episode, you check it off, and then it'll bring up the next one so you know which is next. And one especially useful feature is the ability to see upcoming seasons and episodes. So if you haven't watched a show in a while and you're wondering when it's gonna start, it can tell you that, or if you watch a lot of shows, you can go into the upcoming and see which seasons of shows you haven't seen in a while are actually starting up again soon. And it will notify you about a week in advance if a show that you're following is starting a new season. And this is definitely one of my favorite things about it because I can't tell you how many times where I've completely forgotten about a show that I've been watching but I really like it and then I'll get a notification on my phone. Hey, this show starts up in a week again for a new season. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would have never known that. And now you can easily keep track of when your new shows are starting, especially if you watch a lot of them, it's awesome. Also a more recent feature is it allows you to add movies as well, so it's the same idea. I haven't really used this one as much, but you can do movies as well and keep track of all the movies you watch. And then, like I said, you can view stats, like it shows that I have watched maybe 1.9 thousand episodes of different TV shows, didn't realize it was that much, but there you have it. So definitely one of my favorite apps. I use it all the time, highly recommend it. And this next one is called Citizen, which is basically a real-time news app for your local city. Now, one thing to keep in mind is it's not available in every city. It's available in several different major metropolitan areas around the world, and so you don't have to be directly in the city, just kind of around it. And if you see that your city is on the list, definitely check it out. It basically uses your location and will notify you if something happens nearby within a couple mile radius or so. And then you can also browse the map and see what's happening and see comments from other people of these reports. And it seems to be mostly verified news reports. It's not just like people posting random crap happening. It does seem to have some curation in there from actual police reports or news reports, stuff like that. And it actually is highly localized. So it's not like, oh, this area, it usually has like an exact address of where a thing happened. But also on top of that, if there are people using the app that are nearby, you can actually add videos of that event and then other people can see that you shared it and it's kind of attached to that story. So it's a little bit crowdsourced, not everything, but you can basically add on to things yourself. And sometimes there will be updates time stamped for how the story progresses, kind of like a regular news story. So they'll say this happened this time and then a new update or whatever, and you can see how things progress. So it's really definitely cool for keeping up to date on stuff happening in your local city. All right, next up, number three, we have an app that is basically Vine Reborn. It's called Byte. So if you remember Vine, it was that social media platform where it was just six second videos. That was its whole thing. And then it got shut down, but now it's back from, I believe the same founders. They basically relaunched an app with the same idea, six second videos, and now it's just called Byte. It's a pretty simple app at this point. So you basically just swipe through the different clips and then there's like a discovery tab where there's different topics and a spot light and different genres that you can look through if you want. You can obviously follow people, you have a profile and do the basic stuff like liking and sharing different bytes. It's pretty simplistic right now. It'll be interesting to see if it can even try and compete with TikTok because TikTok is another similar thing that kind of took Vine's place with slightly longer videos, but I don't know if Byte can really compete. It seems like it's kind of late to the party at this point. I know it was super popular on launch day, but I don't know if it can really hold up. We'll have to see, but if you really liked Vine and you don't 
don't like TikTok, then you can check this one out. Okay, moving on, we have Steam Chat, which unlike the regular Steam app, which can do a lot of the stuff like vi visiting the store page on Steam, chatting with friends, viewing community for games and stuff, the Steam Chat is, like it says, a dedicated app just for the chat function in Steam and talking with friends and group chat. And you might be wondering why you would use this if the regular Steam app can do chat and all sorts of other stuff, like I mentioned, like looking at the store and buying games and stuff. And really the answer is the main Steam app chat is kind of janky. It doesn't have all the features that are available on desktop and in this Steam chat app. The dedicated Steam chat app does seem a lot more polished and some of the features it has that the other app does not include things like being able to use Steam emojis. Also with the Steam chat app, you can add photos and embed them in the chat. So it does rich text and rich chat. And it can also handle group chats, which I don't believe any of these features are available in the overall Steam app. You also have better customization over the interface in the Steam Chat app, you have a lot of settings for which friends you want to appear, and you have more control over incoming notifications. So I definitely would use this if you do a lot of chatting on Steam. It seems like it's much more polished and easier to use and organize than the regular app. You can use the other one too if you want and have them both installed, but this just seems more polished. All right, up to number five, we have the Arrive Package Tracker app. So Arrive is actually an app that has been created by the company Shopify. So you might know Shopify is like that shopping online platform that like millions of stores use and you've probably used it without even realizing it, where it kind of keeps all your payment info securely stored and then can be used across stores that use it. Anyway, they created this Arrive app to basically automatically track shipments from any Shopify store, but you can also use it to add in any other shipments that you order from anywhere else. You can manually enter tracking numbers. So you can do that by just clicking the plus button and then you paste in the tracking number. It should automatically detect the carrier, but you can also just enter the name manually and then it'll show your progress on where that package is and you can keep track of them easily. If you're entering a package manually, it does seem to take a little bit of time to update the info on the tracking status. So it's not as seamless as a shipment from from a Shopify store, which is super integrated. So it seems like if you manually enter a package, you have to wait till the next status update for it to show, but still you get the fact that you can enter it at all is nice. So it's pretty basic in some respects, but it is free, so you might wanna try it out. All right, up next, we have the app called 1.1.1.1. It's kind of a weird name, but it's basically Cloudflare's app for using their secure DNS server, which has the IP address 1.1.1.1. And if you don't know much about DNS, I'm not gonna explain what it is here. It's not gonna make your internet itself download speed faster, but it might increase the latency between requests so it could still improve how long it takes for websites to start loading, stuff like that. And basically, if you haven't changed anything, your phone or your computer is probably just using the standard DNS server that comes with your internet service provider, which is probably not gonna be as fast as the Cloudflare one, which has been shown to be very fast. But another feature they have here is called Warp. It's basically a free VPN service that Cloudflare created as part of this app that you can also enable. So there's two actual tiers of this. There's Warp Plus and regular Warp. So Warp Plus, you'll see you get like 10 gigabytes free of it, and then you can pay $4.99 a month to get unlimited. But basically it's a VPN where it encrypts all your data and it uses premium servers that are closely located to the website you're connecting to, something like that. Whereas the regular warp, after you use up the 10 gigabytes free, then it'll use regular warp, which is still encrypted, still a VPN and free. It's just going to use less premium servers. So it's a good way to get a free VPN. It might not be the fastest one out there. So it might not be one you'll use all the time unless you get the premium part of it, but still if it's free, it may as well try it if you wanna use it every once in a while, like if you're on an insecure public Wi-Fi hotspot or something like that. Okay, up next we have an app called Tangi, which is actually created by Google as part of their Area 120 project or whatever, where they basically create experimental apps, see what people like, and this is one they created out of it. And it's basically a platform for sharing short, instructional or educational videos. That's pretty much the point of it. So you can search through the different topics. They have stuff like DIY, cooking, art, and it seems like the maximum is up to around 60 seconds each. And then you can do the usual like liking a video, bookmarking it, comment, the usual social media stuff. But one really cool unique feature for this app is called Try It. So basically if you see an instructional video on something you wanna try, you can click that and then basically share your results for trying this video. So for example, this one is like a drawing of a parrot. You can click try it and then show your own drawing that you made based on this video. And then you can also see other drawings that people made 
from the same video so you can kind of see other people's results and how they tried it and shared it themselves. So it's kind of a unique feature that I don't think we've really seen in too many other platforms, this ability to reply basically with your own instance of something in the video. So it's pretty cool. All right, up next we have a cool new app from Google. It's called Socratic by Google. And basically the idea behind this app is to help you answer schoolwork questions, whether that's high school or university level. And apparently it uses AI to analyze the question and you can enter it a few different ways. You can either type it in or actually use the camera to take a picture of the question like on a worksheet and then select it and highlight it. So you can see it has an example worksheet where you just highlight it as if you took a picture and then you have it analyzed and then it will go through and basically give you a whole bunch of information about that question and try to answer it. So it'll give you a top answer, which seems to basically be like the Google quick result, you type in a question to Google, it'll give you a result, same idea there. But it also show you like an explainer section and like related questions, also related videos. So all sorts of information you could possibly want about a question if it can't outright answer it right away. And it covers a bunch of different topics like biology, chemistry, physics, and other physical sciences. And it also can do math like geometry, trigonometry, calculus, pre-calc, and even history and literature like fiction, nonfiction, US history, world history. So lots of different topics and really cool that you can simply point a camera at a question and maybe get it answered. All right, for number nine, we have the COVID-19 screening tool by Apple. Now this is an actual app for iOS. You can just search COVID-19 screening tool by Apple. But if you're on Android or desktop, you can just go to the web app version. So it's apple.com slash COVID-19. And basically it's an app that'll kind of tell you what to do if you might have symptoms or you're worried about having COVID-19 and the coronavirus. It'll kind of give you suggestions based on what you have. So you can put in your symptoms and your different risk factors if you've been around people that have had it, stuff like that. And usually it will just tell you to either self-isolate or contact a health provider. It's not gonna say, oh, you need a test, stuff like that. It'll just kind of give you super basic suggestions, but it's probably more useful for just keeping track of symptoms over time because it'll give you a report at the end so you can maybe like screenshot it or print it at the end and then every few days maybe do it and keep track of the symptoms and then you can share that with your doctor, stuff like that. But still, it's probably good to have and they might update it in the future with, I don't know, maybe hopefully stuff like where you can get a test I don't know, they haven't done that yet, but I can only hope. All right, finally, number 10, we have an app called Calm, which originally was just basically a meditation app, but now they've added some other features like sleep stories and ways to get to sleep easier, stuff like that. And it is free, there is a paid subscription premium version, but you don't have to get that. And like I said, there's different sections for like guided meditations, calming music, and then sleep. And the sleep section is kind of interesting and funny. It basically has stories read by people like Stephen Fry, Matthew McConaughey, celebrities, even like Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones who played Braun. So kind of funny stuff here if you're interested in, I don't know, getting sleep stories read by different celebrities and authors. Kind of cool if you just want to check it out and it is free, so it's like, why not? So that's about it for these 10 apps. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you guys want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one I talked about seven different free useful Windows programs. Definitely check those out. You should find those really useful as well. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.